the world. I decided to finally open my channel to my non-Polish speaking viewers, that is, my fellow members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in America and South of America, to share my own testimony with them, my own rendition of Mormonism, something that has already been nicknamed my heresy, Mormon heresy. But do keep in mind that this heresy of mine is pro-doctrinal. Stay tuned. By revealing himself to people, God respects their freedom, their customs and culture, in a way he speaks their language. God's declaration that he adapts his message to the times and places where people live is found in Doctrines and Covenants. God, of course, doesn't have to adapt to people's thinking, but he does. Why? Apparently, he cares about people. In the book of Moses, we read, For behold, this is my work and my glory, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. For this beautiful purpose, God sensibly uses human vocabulary. He uses the words that people like, in a way, that are close to people's hearts. He often uses general vocabulary, general terms, but which, high, which are highly valued by the earthlings. And that's why, ironically, I'm going to give a specific example of a general word. The word truth is repeated many times in the scriptures, among words such as good or love. This is why truth has acquired an incredible status in Christian religions, including Mormonism. We can even say that the scriptures tout the truth. The problem with the word truth is that in ancient languages it was broad and it is still to this day. In the cultures of all languages in the world to which the Bible or the Book of Mormon were translated, truth has gained additional legal, ideological and political significance. It is also nonchalantly used by representatives of all worldview options and its meaning today remains elusive especially when a particular follower, religious leader, politician or demagogue tries hard to explain what he truly means when he uses the word <clears throat> truth. Another word that came to be as unfortunate as the word truth is the word love. When the New Testament was being translated into new languages, for example Latin, the, term, the terms for God's attitude towards man got somehow merged into one. In the case of Latin, the choice was caritas, and from the wrong, other general words followed in each European language, including German, English, French, Czech, Croatian, or Polish. Meanwhile, there is no mention of love in the New Testament. Let me put it this way. In the ancient Greek New Testament texts, there are more than serious values spoken of than love. In the course of translation, all of them got covered by just one word that led to blurring out their essence and meaning. Today, these words, all standing for love, are vast, unclear and, in my opinion, completely empty. But the words that got rendered as one word for love were originally very specific. If, at this point, I were to suggest some other words that would solidly define God's relationship to humans and Christ's attitude to his sisters and brothers, I would opt for care and generosity. These, in my opinion, would make the picture really clear. Assuring somebody that you love them by using the 
statement, I love you, is, in my opinion, stupid. What do I mean? Um, let me be more specific. I'd rather say, I just took out the trash, rather than say, I love you. I'd rather call my sister and make sure she's well in hospital than say, I love you. I'd rather give a big hug to my friend when his mom dies than say, I love you. As a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I'd rather mourn with those who mourn and comfort those who are in need of comfort. And by doing so, stand as witness of God at all places and all times. Amen. Try to look for your own renditions of the word love. Try not to use those that you got used to. Forget the scriptures, including the Book of Mormon, you've been studying. These versions you've been studying, translate, like, really do translate the word love to its higher and more glorious level by inventing words of your own. The revelation is not finished yet. My heresy for today, try to be better than the authors of the scriptures. Try to render God's message better than they did. Try to update the gospel in everyday life. Try to become part of this great process of translating the words of the scriptures by using your own language. And make sure you get the correct translation of our Heavenly Father's message. Good luck. Time will say nothing, but I told you so. Time only knows the price we have to pay. If I could tell you, I would let you know. Perhaps the roses really want to grow. The vision seriously intends to stay. If I could tell you, I would let you know. Suppose all the lions get up and go, and all the brooks and soldiers run away. Will time say nothing, but I told you so? If I could tell you, I would let you know.